Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to bring you a very fanciful rant. <laughs> here it's going to be a very media. long presentation, actually. A lot of times we like to start videos and talk about how we just want to talk to you real quick and then it's not quick. We're just going to tell you straight up right now, this is going to be long. We so. like to offer you short things, too, but this is not one of them. This is a 114-page slideshow coming out of NASA. It's been around on the web, and we're going to show you why it's not debunked and why it is very important we talk about it in detail Hence the long video. Yeah, and we actually talked about this on the first episode of True Stream Media Live on Unbound Radio, but due to technical difficulties, that first hour of that first show we did was not able to be archived. And so we've actually learned a lot more about this document since then and about things that complement this document. So Plus it makes it like a pilot for a show where it becomes kind of lost and most people never see it. <laughs> okay, so as Aaron said, this is... Not a debunked document. This is NASA's Future Strategic Issues, Future Warfare, Circuit 2025. And we got this off of a website, stopthecrime.net, I believe. And they wrote the future is now in here. But this document uh, was written by Dennis M. Bushnell, chief scientist at NASA, Lang NASA Langley Research Center. And he's a real guy. He's done. He's got six patents and authored more than 250 publications and major presentations on the future of technology and the impact that it will have on our society. And that's something we've talked about a lot here. Right. And, and so the impact of science on society remains and will increasingly be very important. Just last week, I read some quotes out of Bertrand Russell's The Impact of Science on Society. And that was a major juncture point after World War II where it was increasingly clear that technology was changing things and in particular it was changing the balance of power between governments and individuals or different aspects of society. And so every major development has to be thought of in those terms. Does it make the world smaller? Does it make the world easier to manage? Does it empower individuals? Does it empower their enslavement? These kind of questions are valid and will be increasingly valid. Now that we're seeing the high-tech world unfold, the impact of science on society will become so impactful that disruptive tech takes over and the whole scale of war and what we know about living is probably outmoded and should be rethought in context of emerging technologies. And that brings up an important point. This document, and this is going to come into play a lot throughout this document, the timing of this document. This document came out July 2001. So this document came out just months before the September 11th attacks. And I also want to say again, not debunked. There's, there's websites out there that try to say this is a debunked document. This document may be 12 years old, but it also may be more relevant than ever in light of what we're seeing now that's happening to us now. And you can find this document on, uh, for example, the Federation of American Scientists.org. Their website's got it. I mean, it's, it's out there. And this guy has given similar presentations like this to the Navy and other organizations as well. So this is not a debunked document by any means. This document is real, and it was written July 2001. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. We're not going to do every single slide, so don't get nervous, but we are going to go through. There's quite a few here that, that we need to touch upon because some of the stuff in here is, is just amazing that they said it. So future strategic issues, future warfare, circa 2025, capabilities of the, quote, enemy after next, ongoing worldwide technological revolutions, economic trends, and potential na nature of farther-term warfare. And that's what I've been arguing. The technology is revolutionary. And revolutionary for whom? Well, exactly. And that's a good point that I actually wanted to make, and I just remembered that I wanted to make it. We have been trained through propaganda and all other means that if it has the label science, if it comes through your door brandishing a science flag, that you're supposed to automatically clap and think it's a wonderful, great thing for you because it's under this banner of science. But as we've seen even recently, not everything scientific is wonderful and, and great for all of humankind. I think genetically modified foods are one really great example. But they keep saying that this is the science that's going to feed the world while independent studies continue to come out on seemingly a daily basis about how these foods are not nutritious, how they actually leach the nutrition from the food, they're behind colony collapse disorder, they affect the gut flora and thus in turn 
upset the balance of your immune system, really cause all kinds of horrible health issues, cancers, infertilities, I mean, just all manner of awful things. And yet this is science and it's supposed to be feeding the world and making everyone everything better because it, because it has science written on it. What Melissa says is true, and you got to be thinking, oh, they said warfare documentary. Why are you going off on a rant? No, we're in this era of full-spectrum dominance. This is a system where central banking has taken over the nations of the country. They're getting people onto the system through micro-lending, through credit card debt. Uh, the food has become a weapon of population control, as Kissinger said. And this is an era where they're looking for total consolidation. The New World Order system, the beast system, the machine, whatever it is you want to call it, the, if you think it's going to be the banner of the United Nations, this is a system that's looking to assimilate Borg-style everyone involved. So you're either going along or you're basically an object of the war. You either submit or you're about to be targeted. And there's nothing wrong with standing up for your principles, but this is a system that wants to take over all together. Centralize everything. Okay, so the bots, Borgs, and humans welcome you to 2025 AD. Well, that sounds pleasant and charming. This presentation was based on Future's work for and with and you've got everybody on here. The U.S. Air Force, National Research Council, Army After Next, DARPA's on here, DIA is on here, CIA is on here, FBI is on here, SOCOM. Everybody came to the party on this document. He also goes on, goes on to say it's meant to incite thought and discussion, and that it's based in all cases upon existing data, trends, analyses, and technologies. No pixie dust. So this is not some stuff he just made up. It is meant to incite. It's not stuff they're hoping they might someday no, develop. It's stuff that they have their there. fingers on. Exactly. Going in assumptions. Politics can does change overnight. Potential capabilities is the future warfare issue, not who but what. I think we saw that in the Arab Spring, and it was enabled by technology specifically. Need to plan, quote unquote, differently. The world is in the throes. And remember, that was in the throes as of July 2001 of triple, triple exponential IT bio nano technological revolutions. Changes are occurring at scales of months instead of decades. Zeroth order potential effects upon defense, offense, equipment, conops, threat. Okay, now this is a, a quote from P. Criola. Spaceship Earth. This is what they're saying about us now. The crew are plundering the ship's supplies, tinkering with the temperature and life support controls, still looking for the instruction manual, engaging in bloody skirmishes in every corner of the vessel, and increasing the size of the crew by two million per week. So this is talking about resources and that we are plundering the ship's supplies. That's talking about their thought that basically the world is overpopulated and we're taking over uh, all of the resources and that we are tinkering with the temperature and life support controls. As we mentioned earlier, this, this guy has, has his fingers in the pies of the, all the climate change, that, or anthropogenic climate change concept, that man-made climate change, even though that's been debunked, and they've even been able to prove that NASA has put out false data on that. Uh, but he's talking about that here. And in my mind, this reinforces why I say full-spectrum dominance is important. They're saying a tipping point is being reached, planet Earth is in jeopardy, spaceship Earth. And so, in other words, all the chips are on the table, someone's going to wreck this thing, and it may as well be their team. You see this in conventional war that's going on. This was a big part of 9-11, the Project for a New American Century document, specifically highlighted a lot of these future threats and said this was their big window, it was a closing window to become the first, last, and only major superpower. And if they don't grab it, it could end up being China or any other country grab it who's emerging. India's got so many tech people up and coming and they've got a giant population. They wanted this to be the final grab for control of the global system under U.S. auspices. Meanwhile, Ray Kurzweil and others are saying this technology is coming to a head and one of these benchmark years is 2025, the year named of this document. Yeah, and you've seen this time and again in our history. I mean, the, the atomic bomb is a really good example. We had to build it, right? Because if we didn't build it, then Russia was going to build it. So we had to build it. So we have to take control of everything because if we don't, someone else will. And if we don't wage war on the entire population of the globe, the numbers of the people on the planet will wage war against us. That's the thinking. Yeah, and here he explains that even more. 
humans have taken over and vastly shortened evolution of the planet via global warming, pollution, deforestation, huge public work, e.g. Three Gorges Dam, of the human species, genomic design and repair, quote-unquote mind children, and products slash life forms, cross-species, molecular breeding, and directed evolution. And that's something that we've reported on at True Stream Media. I know we just got done putting an article out a few weeks ago having to do with DARPA getting on this research bandwagon with the 47th chromosome, which is a genetically modified, genetically designed 47th chromosome they want to be able to put into people, call it hacks, and basically hack you <laughs> with a 47th chromosome with which they can put all manner of codes and things in. It's not something, and they admit in their own writings, that they are able to control either. So we're going to skip ahead just a little bit here. Um, this is going over just the history here of technological ages of humankind, how it was hunter-killer groups, agriculture, industrial, and then it says IT from 1950 to 2020, and then it says bio slash nano 2020 to question mark and virtual. Um, although bio, obviously we can all argue bio nano and virtual are here. And, and this now. is again straight out of Ray Kurzweil textbook that things are accelerating at an exponential rate, and the rate of revolutions and transformations of society is again reaching this crescendo. This is all about a certain closing window. There is a master picture here. It kind of looks like they're just spreading the cards out on the deck, but that's not the only thing that's happening. Okay, so you have hunter-gatherer nature provided for them, then agricultural uh, controlled nature, plants and animals. Um, industrial is mechanized agriculture. IT, bio, nano is automating industry and agriculture. And then virtual, the robotization of IO, IT, bio, nano, industry, agriculture. And I mean, we're seeing a lot of this now with genetic genetic modification and how that's spreading across the globe. Well, you saw the term directed evolution. They think they're going to take control of it through technology and not only control nature in terms of agriculture, but control all of life and, and craft it in the direction they want to go. Well, and it's pretty interesting, too, because, again, they don't. They're not able to obviously control it, or else we wouldn't have the invention of super weeds, which are now in the millions of hectares, super weeds growing all over the world, and super bugs that are becoming resistant to what they're doing. And somehow the EPA just keeps saying, we just need to have more pesticides and chemicals, and that'll make it better. And it's not making it better. They're not able to control what they started, but they just keep doing more and more. It's ridiculous. And so, Key future technologies all highly synergistic at the frontiers of the small in a quote-unquote feeding frenzy off of each other. And he goes through IT, bio, and nano. And he's talking about silicone, bio, optical, quantum, nano, computing, no end in sight, virtual reality, and holographic, immersive, ubiquitous comms, hyperspectral sensors, virtual presence, automatic, robotic, everything, huge cost reductions. And then in bio... We've got genetic engineering before birth is mentioned on here. So that should, <laughs> that right there should remind you of pretty much every scary futurist, dystopian futuristic eugenics movie you've ever watched. Gattaca being the first one that comes to mind. In Time we've reported on. But there are many others as well. And, and again you see lifespan doubling. That's again from the Ray Kurzweil textbook. But places greater emphasis on all the population issues they've already brought up. Because if there's this many billion, the thought of that many billion living for twice as long gets them right into their whole false debate over the resources of the earth and why they have to limit population growth, limit actual populations, and why they might be justified in some kind of large-scale asymmetrical bio-warfare, etc. Yeah, it's just, it's really scary how people don't seem to realize this. We have not all been invited to this elitist technocratic party. We, we're not all on the guest list for that, okay? So when they say lifespan doubling, these are the same people that are arguing that the Earth is overpopulated. So obviously they are not interested in doubling the lifespan of everybody here. That's obviously not in their interest at all. And so it's silly when I see people arguing about how we just have to... They're, they're arguing these soft eugenics arguments about killing people for the Earth and not having babies for the Earth and all this other kind of stuff. And they don't seem to realize they're not in the lifespan doubling category. They have not been given 
an invitation to that party. Well, the metaphor sounds silly, but just think of the consequences when they someday play a global musical chairs to see Ugh. who gets seated at the table that's supposed to bring them double lifespan or perhaps eternal life someday. It's creepy. And then you have nano carbon nanotube, 600 times strength to weight of steel, assemblers slash living factories. What do you think about living factories? Uh, that sounds like growing pharmaceuticals and plants, for one thing. They've been doing that. They're also growing parts, human parts, in animals, genetically modified. I mean, it's ugh. huge cost reduction, though. So there you go. They're going to save money doing that. Well, they're not only going to supposedly put nano into our bloodstream to check on our vitals or to do minor repairs, but nano will become self-replicating and autonomous. And Ray Kurzweil straight up predicts that someday we're going to see nano wars like different factions of nanobots fighting it out for their control plane and one avenue of that war one field of battle could be inside your human body uh, and that's straight well, out of the stuff Kurzweil talks about and it, they just keep screwing with everything they just keep screwing with nature reading through this list you can see how the wonders of science have really screwed everything up and these people come along and, and they got some new technology in their ha hot little hands and they think suddenly they're more intelligent than millions of years of nature. It's ridiculous. Well, knowledge is not wisdom, and if you use technology or any new powers without wisely, you know, and cautiously assigning them out, you're going to cause major damage. Well, and they already admit in a, like in the 47th chromosome article that we wrote in their uh, call for research into that, which which our tax dollars, I suppose, are paying for. They readily admit that these bio-designers, as they call themselves, these genetic engineers of human chromosomes, all of their studies so far, they can't control it. I read a story about a young man, I think it was in either 1998 or 1999, and they tried to inject him with uh, gene therapy, and it just shut his whole entire body down and killed him very quickly because they don't know what they're doing, and they list a whole list of how doing this has... Uh, cause all kinds of issues in ways that they were not able to predict and control. And so for them to go ahead and move on with these, you know, things and just continue them, even though obviously they have far-reaching dangerous implications, is just, it's just wrong. Uh, worldwide IT revolution. Comms, computing sensors, electronics, U.S. commercial IT research, research and development, excuse me, $100 billion a year in the commercial sector. Factor of one million further improvement, silicone, molecular, quantum, bio, optical, beyond human AI, automatics, robotics in the large, immersive, multi-sensory, virtual reality, holodecks. He said holodecks, people. In the large means for global population. Yeah. Just anywhere and everywhere. Ubiquitous multi-physics hyperspectral sensors, land, sea, air, space, micro nanosats, GNC sensors, etc. Ubiquitous everywhere. Worldwide impacts of ongoing IT revolution upon society. Telecommuting, teleshopping, teleentertainment, teletravel, teleeducation, telemedicine, telecommerce, telepolitics, telesocialization, tele everything, basically. And that's something Dennis Bushnell in particular has presented on. But yeah, obviously they're talking about everything becoming electronic and they get more deeply into the education aspects because they're going to be shutting down schools, they say. We're going to see the end of university training as we've seen it, and now online education sounds really good, could be really good, could definitely be used to empower the world, but it could also be used in an increasingly information-based age to spread propaganda, misperceptions, and those can become very powerful misperceptions. Yeah, and that's what's really scary about it. I've, I've read an article recently that refers to this as the Gates effect, actually, here in America, because Bill Gates is funding so much. He's First of all, he's just buying schools, basically. He's funding quite a bit of schools. I mean, he just got done giving ten, another $10 million to the Denver public schools just like a couple weeks ago, and every week he gives millions of dollars more to different public schools, and he's really pushing Common Core, and he's really pushing... Uh, teleeducation, but the thing that you have to consider when you consider teleeducation is you have to think about who's controlling what's going into that teleeducation. If you get rid of teachers and you, who's controlling the curriculum at that point? Is it Bill Gates? They're calling it the Gates effect on education. So, I mean, I, 
I think that's a very serious thing. Well, there's one more important thing about tele, and that's, you know, just like the word telescope, it's something that brings you closer. So, yes, it's gotten certain like minded groups together on the internet and stuff, but it also brings you into an immediacy of perception again, and it can create a very succinct tunnel uh, vision. Uh, t- exactly, and group mind thinking. And you could be connecting with high tech centers around the world and think the whole world's gone high tech. There could be vast ghettos or natural pasture lands physically all around that. And if they didn't show it to you in the frame you were seeing, you'd never see it. Exactly. If you weren't allowed to travel the world, you would eventually not know it's there. IT status, 10E6 improvements in computing since 1959, 10E8 further possible next 30 years, provides better than human capabilities. 100 million telecommuters worldwide now, expected to double in 15 years. India graduates three times more software engineers in the U.S., more software written in Bangalore than Southern California. But this last bullet point is what really stuck out to me. IW effectively constitutes a fourth WMD. And he's talking about information warfare effectively constitutes a fourth weapon of mass destruction. And again, it's the power of psychology, the power of info war. And obviously it's a weapon of mass destruction. You've seen people ridiculing Fox News in the wake of 9-11. Weapons of mass distraction, you know. (laughs) Uh, All the different phony debates they've had. And certainly a major propaganda effort can be a full-on weapons of mass destruction. Definitely. Some it predictions. That's why independent thought's becoming illegal, by the way. A little known fact. Critical thinking. Yeah. Okay, some it predictions. Quantum computing initially available in five years. 15% of all power today is used by computers. will reach 60% by 2010. Not sure if that came true. Wearable, implantable, on-person electronics, comms, computing, sensory augmentation, health monitoring, and brain stimulation. Bottom line, we're teched up to the core. We really are. And the, and the health monitoring, I mean, I just saw something the other day about a microchip that you wear on your skin and it gets scanned when you go to the doctor and he knows everything about you. We've got Regina Dugan, ex-DARPA, works at Motorola, which is under Google, wearing a basically a tattoo, Mark of the Beast People tattoo. rightfully got <laughs> upset about the plans to microchip everybody and introduce the greatness of RFID. The implications of control are huge and apparent. Definitely. So I'll say no more. But the bottom line, this stuff is all expanding and accelerating, and it's going to become, like I said, so disruptive that technology is just going to change everything, and the wake of power will be left to be determined. But let's not be foolish about what's coming. Let's let's see it for what it is. All right. U.S. Human Brain Project. This began in the early 90s, it says, funded by 16 organizations across five agencies, the NIH, the NSF, the DOD, NASA, DOE a.k.a. neuroinformatics, intersection of neuroscience and informatics, exploding field, etc., etc., use of IT to study brain, use of brain info to aid IT AI. Now, Obama just got done putting, I think, $100 million more million towards this project. This project is continuing, and DARPA is very much tied to this project. They are part of it. They're also working on other projects such as putting a real human brain inside of a robot simultaneously as they are working on this And once again, I just got to point out, it's Ray Kurzweil, and he's been talking about mapping the brain, and once they achieve that, you know, this leads to other launching off points. This one just creeps me out. Uh, The the Imagination Engine, uh, a.k.a. Creativity Machine, a.k.a. Creative Agent, uh, says generates new ideas, concepts via starving a trained neural net of meaningful inputs and forcing it to dream. Huh. Create new concepts, an attendant neural net used to capture, record, evaluate, and report on these writings. They make it sound like a lab rat. That's just creepy. We're going to skip ahead a few, um, just in essence of time. We've got a lot here. Uh, oh, this this here is talking about, again, like we had mentioned earlier, having to do with co- public colleges closing, private colleges closing, um, due to web-based competition and how a lot more things are going to go online with education. And then it says the ultimate education approach, plug and play. This is like straight out of the matrix now. This will feel a little weird. And again, yeah, it's creepily straight out of the matrix where you can just quickly download things into your silicon implants 
But again, how is this disruptive to global populations? Well, when billions of people have access to instant information and it's just all about knowing the official information and not about studying real history, your ability to get a job based on that information also becomes challenged because any human could probably replace you. Well, that and education in minutes instead of many years. So I guess just like in the Matrix, we're going to plug something into the back of our heads. But once again, who's putting the information into that device that's going in there? Who's writing that? Who's controlling who's it? Who's framing it? Exactly. What's next on this list? It's major, major emerging law enforcement issues. Privacy. Ubiquitous micro nano sensors. So Bottom per- line, it's gone. It's already gone. It's already gone. Uh, IT slash net crime wide spectrum. Again, we're seeing that right now every time Snowden releases yet another document. Biocrime, binary pathogens, and genetics. That's something that we've reported on before. We even have uh, that clip of Dr. Arntzen where he talked about making better genetically modified weaponized viruses. So, uh, and wiping people out. Mad scientists. Yeah, genocidalist. And also, Kurzweil, again, in his Age of Spiritual Machines, which was written in 1999, he talks extensively about using pathogens and genetics as a weapon of war. But a different type of warfare, genetics. Where is intellectual patents going to go? Will this become a biocrime to have unauthorized or unpaid for genetics? They just lost a major Supreme Court case, but they're by no means giving up. And in the future, this is going to be controlled genetic material. But what's probably even bigger is something we saw coming to the news uh, really only a couple weeks ago with the death of Barnaby Jack, who was about to present at the Black Hat Conference. He's been explaining how cars and ATMs can be hijacked, but so can pacemakers and other human electronic implants. And so protection of those uh, becomes a major new factor as of 2001, but especially today with Barnaby Jack, whose cause of death, by the way, hasn't been explained. And they're saying they won't know it for months. And he was supposed to speak at the conference that Keith Alexander got heckled at. And he, supposedly his his presentation was going to be on how he they, they can hack these pacemakers and such, but he never got to speak. Obviously, he died right before that. And then you've got protection of CONUS beyond terrorism. And that's, of course, continental United States. I personally think that's a riddle uh, for jurisdiction. There's the rules of engagement for you know, contemporary conventional warfare, but then there's things they can do that they can't do in regular warfare. If it's a terrorist situation, if it's a hostage situation, you then get to go around certain constitutional restrictions or, you know, Geneva Convention type restrictions. And I think beyond terrorism also implies we're going to see new jurisdictions emerge, including probably mental, psychological, information-based ones. Societal disaffection slash upheaval caused by rapid technological change changes, road air rage, psychosomatic illnesses, withdrawal from society, I suppose. And this could actually become the biggest one of all because, again, there's so much technology coming to bear and it's disruptive technology that the power scale will be shifted. People will be affected by this and it's going to probably upheave certain aspects of society, if not, frankly, just everyone. And that's an important factor when you consider the impact of science on society. Well, the first answer is it's a huge impact. Giant. Of particular concern, uncontrolled, uncontrollable self-replication of brilliant robots, IT, nano-replicators, nano, and rampant recombinant bio. That sounds fun. That This is scary. This This is still true today. They can't... They can't even control the stuff that they're doing now. They can't even really control, and that's why they're still working on it. But, you know, they're going to move ahead, even though this has been warned about in how many different uh, sci-fi movies? I mean, it's everywhere, the warnings of this. It's like, have they not even watched Jurassic Park or anything? Or Terminator, Terminator. (laughs) or The Matrix, or any other movie that has cybernetic revolt going on, which is like all movies that have robots, basically. It's like they... Who are these people? They don't care about Pandora's box. That's probably just there to acclimate the public. All right, next, next. Here, bio-revolution applications, 
quote unquote farm animals for drugs and spare parts. And again, this is came out in two thousand one. This has already been put into place. We've started to cover the prodigy scandal, for instance, where they found uh, contamination incidents where they were dro- uh, growing pharmaceutical drugs inside of genetically modified corn. They're also going to grow what they say are going to be replacement organs for humans and, and pigs That's... or cows. And they're going to do things like rate, use, put spider silk genes into goats, create body armor because of the volume that could be produced by a larger animal, and other combinations. Monstrous Frankenstein stuff. Ugh. Examples, confluence of IT bio nano. Brain of a sea lamprey was inserted and connected to the body of a robotic fish, an initial cyborg. And then you've got Choo Choo, a flesh slash plant eating robot that hunts and bio digests quote unquote natural foods to quote unquote live off the land. Ugh, like a robot that's going to eat you, basically. I mean, I'm not sure how else you can really take that. Ugh. Let's move ahead here Let's see I think is this where I wanted to go here we go some sensor swarms smart dust cubic millimeter or less combined sensors comms and power supply floats in air currents nano tags placed on everything everywhere everything everywhere nano tags <laughs> identification and status info and so again they're doing this kind of stuff they're going to tag anything and everywhere the very opposite of fourth amendment protections they have privacy and due process unless there's evidence against you and a sworn warrant with a witness that's all gone they're going to meta tag and track mega data of meta data i'm mixing a bunch of terms but they all apply actually they're tracking big data everywhere for everything huge swarms of information entire population movements specific individuals all of it i was freaked out enough when i read that walmart i mean not that i buy my underwear at walmart not that you guys needed to know that but you know i was freaked out enough when i found out that walmart was putting rfid tracker chips inside of their underwear products so they could track where consumers wear well, their products. Well, in, po- in I mean, point of fact, the Pentagon's first like inventory control system with RFID tracking was done with a partnership through Walmart, and they've actually pressured other retailers to adopt it or basically be forced out of the business, and there's a whole history with that. Ugh. And so, yeah, that really is the precursor. Inventory control first for Walmart goods, but eventually for people, livestock, you know. Well, and you've also got all the research going on with nano tags, uh, like for example, Bill Gates again funding nano cloth, which is supposed to be a wearable garment that can dispense medication to you as you wear it. That's pretty icky. And then he also comes to mind with co-opted insects because he's been doing research into basically mosquitoes that deliver vaccines. Well, they keep trying to tell us it's going to be the Jetsons, and I just keep seeing the Terminator movies. <laughs> I mean, exactly. That scene with the playground where the apocalypse just starts, and then all the horrible Schwarzenegger t- you know, screen time. I mean, it's... And they will play it with our emotions. They'll disguise robots as friendlies. <laughs> That's the whole they half all... the point of cyborgs yes, anyway. Yes, every time I see a new robot from DARPA, I think, gee, that looks super friendly. Okay, That's but scary as even hell, the, isn't it? Even in the movie Avatar, another James Cameron, just like Terminator, the whole point of getting in that Avatar suit, uh, those physical people from the army from Earth could have walked up to the tribe. They got in the Avatar so they could look like those people, gain their sympathy, exactly. and take over that culture that they had uh, you know just wanted to wipe out genocidally so they could get the resources that's a moral tale there really horrifying Mm. for those of you who just read ahead because i had it on the next slide micro dust weaponry isn't this creepy that this is even a thing it's a mechanical analog to bio micron sized mechanized dust that's distributed as an aerosol and inhaled into the lungs. Dust mechanically bores into lung tissue and executes various quote unquote pathological missions. A wholly quote unquote new class of weaponry which is legal. So that's what they consider legal because semantically this has not been added to any kind of Geneva Conventions or anything. It's somehow legal for them to spray a dust which has mechanical. Yeah, this is, oh, it's just, it's really, this is, cre- this is such a creepy document. And that's, that, that right there, just add that with geoengineering. 
and then try not to have a nightmare is basically <laughs> what I'm saying. Screaming. Well, they say they're going to have a new society based on the power of ideas, but they're going to create such terror of being repressed if you basically have an original thought that no one's going to want to even assert anything that doesn't go along with the Emperor's new clothes routine. Oh, basically. What else do we have? Volumetric weaponry. EMP. Infonet Psy Warfare. Miniature Brilliant Sensor Mine Combos. Fuel Air and Dust Air Thermobarics. Um, radio Frequencies. Chem, Bio, Antifunctionals, Antifauna, Isomers, Strain Bond Energy Release, Carbon Fibers, and Blades Acoustics. Co correct me if I'm wrong, but the use of volumetric implies entire populations here. An information or network-based or psychological war warfare. Psychological warfare. That's something that we're going to get into. Just We're going to detour from this for just a second to get into that a little bit more here because we have learned recently some very interesting information having to do with the psychological warfare that our government has been engaged in. This guy, his name is Michael A. Aquano. He is a Lieutenant Colonel Psychological, Force Operation, Psychological Operations 1st Special Forces Regiment of the U.S. Army, retired. And this guy was all up in it. He's an Army Officer Branch for Psychological Operations. His additional branch qualifications include Armor, Civil Affairs, Military Intelligence, Special Forces. He's done... Uh, additional skill in, in identifiers include foreign area officer, psychological operations, special forces, uh, defense attache, strategic intelligence, force development, uh, operations and training officer for, uh, he's a psychological operation, I mean, he's, it just goes on and on, it's a very long list as you can see here of things that this man has done, uh, having to do with the psychological operations, and what he has also done is he wrote this paper from PSYOP to Mind War, The Psychology of Victory. This um, is a paper that got leaked in 1980 and there was a whole kind of firestorm around it and they covered their tracks. It became a lot more controversial when it came out that this Aquino guy was a former member of the Church of Satan and now leading the Temple of Set. I was getting ready to mention that. Oh, did I, I jump the gun? You I, jumped it just a little bit, but I, I, I will go ahead and go that now. This guy didn't just do all the things that I mentioned to you about him being a psychological operations officer. A thoroughly extensive military career. He was a very long military career for a very long time. He also founded the Temple of Set in June 1975 which is supposed to be, um, he was a member of Anton LaVey's Church of Satan, but that wasn't, I guess, hardcore enough for him. So he left and founded his own Temple of Set uh, church. And Satanism redirects here, it says. So I, I, I really won't get into this much more than that. I don't like to dwell on these kinds of things at all, personally. Well, when you talk about leaders of the New World Order being but, into the occult and so forth, a lot of them are partially or not at all admitted this guy's definitely out in the open fully admitted. admitted he's totally proud of it and so like i said i i don't want to give any more power to this uh it doesn't deserve it but this is a person who was very much at the forefront of psychological operations and development of techniques in our military and he's also the founder of a satanic church so there you go for that. He wrote this Mind War document, which did get leaked. And um, I just want to read a couple of things out of this because I think it's important for you to understand. Psy he says, Psychotronic research is in its infancy, but the U.S. Army already possesses an operational weapon system designed to do what LTC Alexander would like ESP to do, except that this weapon system uses existing communications media and it seeks to map the minds of neutral and enemy individuals and then change them in accordance with U.S. national interests. It does this on a wide scale, embracing military units, regions, nations, and blocks. In its present form, it is called Psychological Operations, or PSYOP. He outright says they're about to declare war on all populations, both the U.S. population and any enemy populations, and that is the whole point to use this paradigm of mind war to convince all parties, friendly, neutral, enemy, that this entity will win the war. Yes, and this again is called mind war, and so he says he doesn't want to call this psychological operations, this should be rightfully called mind war. 
And he says that Mind More must, must reach out to friends, enemies, and neutrals alike across the globe, neither through primitive battlefield leaflets and loudspeakers of PSYOP, nor the weak, imprecise, and narrow efforts of psychotronics, but through the media possessed by the United States, which have the capabilities to reach virtually all people on the face of the earth. And he's talking about electronic media, television, and radio, and then of course later now we have computer communications. State-of-the-art developments, he says, in satellite communication, video recording techniques, and laser and optical transmission of broadcasts make possible a penetration of the minds of the world such as would have been inconceivable just a few years ago. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, this was written in 1980. So just think about what they got going on today. Like the and that's of- when they mastered satellite television, and soon would come the emergence of CNN, then other cable news networks. And just as an aside, if you're familiar with the leaked uh, Project Blue Beam, that ties into this too. I won't say much more on that. But this you is can a far-reaching document, but they very clearly talk about an information-based psychological war through the media to all populations. Yes, through the world. And once again, we're seeing this same... Uh, thread that we've seen before this same argument like the sword of excalibur we have the courage and integrity to enhance civilization with it if we do not accept it we relinquish our ability to inspire foreign cultures with our morality so it's that argument that if we don't do something someone else will Mm -hmm. we have to do something we have to uh inspire foreign cultures with our morality by the way coming from a guy who started a satanic church anyway if they then desire moralities unsatisfactory to us we have no choice but to fight them on a more brutish level mind war must target all participants if it is to be effective it must not only weaken the enemy it must strengthen the united states it strengthens the united states by denying enemy propaganda access to our people and by explaining and emphasizing to our people the rationale for our national interest in a specific war. And then he goes on to say, under existing United States law, PSYOP units may not target American citizens. Don't you judge this guy's convictions. He just wants a comfortable spot inside your mind. Oh, okay. Well, I don't feel too good about him saying that in 1980 when today we have U.S. repeals propaganda ban spreads government-made news to Americans. I'm sure they're only limited it limiting it to that. Uh, But I also wanted to point out really quick that there have been many different technologies, and he had mentioned psychotronics. Here's an example of that. That was actually reported during uh, Operation Operation Iraqi Freedom in 1991, where they used a secret Pentagon psychotronics technology known as Silent Sound Spread Spectrum, and they the physical, emotional, and psychological effects of the technology were so severe that hundreds of thousands of Iraqi troops surrendered in mass without firing a single shot against U.S.-led coalition forces. The numbers reported in the news were staggering. 75,000 and then another 125,000 or more Iraqi troops would come out of their deep desert bunkers waving white flags and falling to their knees before approaching U.S. troops and literally kissing their captors' boots or hands if given the opportunity Um, Why would eight-year veterans in Middle Eastern warfare behave this way? Simple. They were subjected to a technology that was so extreme and incomprehensible, they were suddenly reduced to the level of compliant children and felt grateful to still be alive in the wake of their mind-wrenching experience. And that's, of course, a theater where, obviously, propaganda was legal because it was a conventional theater of war. But if we're having unconventional war and if propaganda is legal, even on the home front, You can imagine the possibilities. Who knows what they're actually doing, except we do have clues. Which we do have unconventional war. We have that right now. We have undeclared drone wars. We have all kinds of stuff going on. And now we have this uh, mentioned back in 91 where they're talking about using silent subliminals or high-frequency silent sounds underneath uh, broadcasts that they were giving. They took over an Iraqi station. uh, They covered up the transmission of an Iraqi station on the same frequency and put out their own frequency. And it says, according to statements made by captured and deserting Iraqi soldiers, the most devastating and demoralizing programming was the first known military use of this subliminal message is referred to as the ultra-high frequency, frequency silent sounds or silent subliminals. And they were programmed by PSYOP psychologists that were clearly perceived by the subconscious minds of the Iraqi soldiers, and the silent messages completely demoralized them and instilled a perpetual feeling of fear and hopelessness in their minds. It's pretty incredible stuff. I would submit that 
we need to think about how we in this country are perpetually told to be afraid. Well, this document fear. again came out two months before 9-11. Yeah, this and document. But after 9-11, let's think about what happened in the InfoNet Psy Warfare uh, arena. Remember Never Forget? Remember how that was literally everywhere after this was over? It was, we will never forget, never forget. It just was grilled into us, never forget. And that was after weeks on end of 24-7 news programming having to do with 9-11 terror attacks. And what are we seeing today? Well, just recently when we saw the Boston bombing, we saw that every terror attack ever was brought up around that event, wasn't it? Well, I don't want to get into MK Ultra too much right now. We'll cover it later. But they practice trauma-based mind control, and they're very arguably doing this on the mass scale through the 9-11 event. I would certainly argue that. And they try to resurrect the trauma of 9-11 and other terror attacks anytime it suits their need or anytime they need to hype up other terror attacks like the Boston Marathon bombing. Exactly. I mean, look at some of these headlines that came out when the Boston Marathon happened. The Boston bomb reminds us that we're not safe. Boston bombing reminder that liberty carries a price. Mayor Bloomberg after Boston bombings. Interpretation of Constitution must change to increase security. At the same time, we also had a uh, plant explodes near Waco, uh, false alert in Oklahoma City. I mean, every major place was was touched upon. Plus, they magically found a plane part from 9-11 in New York City right after the Boston bombing. I mean, what are the odds of that? It's propaganda. It's totally propaganda. What do we have going on now? Well, Keith Alexander was heckled by hackers because of all the stuff that's going on with the NSA leaks at the Black Hat Hackers Conference. He was heckled, and many have pointed out the fact that that happened. We've got people on a mass scale saying, freedom, and we don't trust you. You lied to Congress. You know, we've a general unrest within the people. And what immediately preceded that? Well, we had terror threat that caused 19 embassy closures, global travel alerts similar to what intelligence agencies saw before 9-11, say top lawmakers. When they didn't see it coming, but should have, because they were being warned repeatedly by other intelligence agencies. Quite ironic, considering Keith Alexander's speech at this conference included a PowerPoint, which basically said, never again, I think he used, which is basically a call upon the never Well, he forget. and other people in Congress are trying to insist that the NSA isn't spying on Americans, yet it's protecting us from terror attacks. But think about how every time something major happens, or even if something major doesn't happen, we suddenly have this recall to 9-11, never forget, never forget. They're, they're branding it into our minds and reminding us over and over that we can never forget that, and that that is a cause for us to give up our safety. We can never, 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 never forget. Always remember 9-11, never, never forget. And it's just ingrained in people now. I mean, this, somebody made this graphic that says, forget 9-11, no more than I would forget my own name. So there you go. And if you type in never forget in, a, in an image search engine, you will find that this is what it's tied to. It's tied to this. And if you live through the 9-11 events through the television, you won't ever forget because those images are sunk very deeply into your mind. Very deeply. So we've got that going on. We've got uh, all this other stuff that's mentioned here. What slide are we on next? I think we're going to 50. We've got anti-personnel, microwave, and radio frequency weaponry, heating, high power requirements, surface effects, brain interactions of low frequency modulation. There are large, voluminous lists of the research that our government has done having to do with microwaves and being able to control brain interactions. And what he said about MKUltra, go ahead and look that up too, because it definitely plays a role here. They know what they're doing when they're this, talking about this This stuff things. exists, and one way of using it is as a giant cattle prod, a high-tech cattle prod. Basically. Effects of low-power microwaves, behavioral performance decrements, seizures, gross alteration in brain function, 30 to 100% increases in brain blood flow, and lethality, interactions between low-power microwaves and brain function. Often fingerprintless bio-archipelago. Bacteriological, viruses, prions, parasites, fungi, carcinogens, toxins, hormones, regulators, fatal to disabling, short to long time scales, antiflora, fauna, functional, direct and undetectable binary, natural genomic and biohacking, 
biohacking. We just talked about that earlier with DARPA. In fact, DARPA is involved in a whole lot of the stuff that's going on here. I told you this was an asymmetrical, unconventional war, and you see all these things that people are concerned about being in their food, air, water, and they're there, and they're admitting that they're basically weapons available to war. And they're genetically modifying us and our environment with that. Uh, some interesting vineyard BW possibilities, I guess bio war possibilities, mm -hmm. aflatoxin, natural parts per billion carcinogen, airborne varieties of Ebola. That's, again, Charles Arntzen was basically talking about doing that. Uh, binary agents distributed via imported products. Uh, you're talking about high-tech uh, smallpox blankets. Basically, yeah. It's basically high-tech smallpox blankets like we gave the Indians back in the day. Binary agents distributed via imported products such as vitamin, clothing, and food. Ugh. Genomically individual slash societal targeted pathogens. Genomically targeted pathogens. These are expectations for warfare in the year 2025. Long-term fingerprintless campaign as exposed to shock and awe bio war. As opposed to shock. So they can do it big in your face, explosions at the Iraq war. They can do it subtly and not even tell you what's going on. All right. This one really creeps both of us out a lot. Do you want to read this one? It, it discusses an existing, and that is tested and existing, biocommative. Something, Calmative. a biological agent to presumably calm down populations to make them docile, to make them stand down, what have you. Okay, and this is the Venezuelan equine encephalitis. Now check out how this is distributed. It's an, it says it's an ideal incapacitating bio-war agent that was, was weaponized. weaponized on both sides of the Cold War way back in the 50s and 60s. And then it's easily transmitted via aerosol. So how's, how's how, that for you, Kentrell how, conspiracy theorists? Yeah, how would they easily transmit via aerosol a a calmative bio-war agent to a large group. Well, a plane sounds about... Are we in a war that wasn't declared? Are we being bio-calmed at the same time we're terrorized through our television? No, chemtrails don't exist. That's just atmospheric conditions. Oh, I forgot. Let's That's move on. That's what my dad would say. Highly infectious, low fatality rate. One to five day incubation, three week recovery. It says it was tested on humans in Operation White Coat. So there you go. And there's no treatment available. They're talking about incapacitating entire populations, and they've already discussed including the U.S. population, other global populations. It's and the right NDAA there. declared the U.S. a battlefield. It's what they and said. all these legal loophole terms have meaning. They're important. Yeah. Okay. What's next? Um, I think we were going to go to what is apparently legal. Microwave, radio frequency, antifunctional, and antipersonal weaponry. This is apparently legal for them to use. Chemical antifunctional weaponry, chemical psychological effects via sensory organs weaponry, e.g. smell, but that's all your sensory organs. Chemical personnel and incapacitation weaponry, non-warfare, e.g. hostage terrorism only. Psy war. That is apparently legal. Acoustic weaponry, we know we have LRAD devices and other things, plus what I just got in showing you having, having to do with silent sound war. And this slide, injected into people's minds. This slide number 55 is the one I referred to in the intro when they talked about protecting CONUS beyond terrorism. Again, there's things that you supposedly can't do in conventional warfare because of the G Geneva Conventions, uh, maybe constitutional restrictions, but this is what's apparently legal given that. Things that you could do that aren't against the law under Geneva or things you could do in, quote, non-warfare, including hostage and terrorism. So it's a semantic argument. To expand jurisdiction for warfare by other means, unconventional warfare. Go ahead. So, I'm going to just skip ahead here. There's a lot in this document. Um, this slide is where... I, no, think it's the the next I think it's the next slide, but this slide I want to go ahead and mention. Major influences upon of IT bio nano upon future warfare. Again, ubiquitous miniar miniaturized network multi-physics, hyperspectral sensors, robotics in the large, infonet warfare. Now check this one out. This one really upset me the first time I read it. It upsets me every time I read it. Increasingly critical human limitations and downsides. We're large, we're heavy, we're tender, we're slow physically and mentally, and we require huge logistic trains, i.e. humans have rapidly decreasing to negative value added. And that's where the rubber meets the road, folks. That's why they're willing to dispense with you. That's why human life has become cheap. 
And that's why they're considering warfare on such a grand and all-encompassing full-spectrum scale. And it's devastating. It's, it's telling us that we are to be eradicated, we're scheduled to be eradicated, and that basically our value has evaporated. It's, it's been outmoded. We've been offshored. It's just horrifying. So there you go. They're straight up saying it. We, we have negative, decreasing the negative value in this technological age. It's a game changer, and they've pretty much said all the chips are on the table, as I said before. The whole global population's in play because they're saying this affects everybody. This is a big deal. Now we've got emerging characteristics of robotic systems uh, from expert systems towards AI and beyond. Much more reactive than humans. Greatly increased tempo. Greatly improved hyperspectral sensors, data fusion, improved accuracy, lethality. It says redefines risk, minimal casualties, salutes CNN syndrome. Let me talk a little bit about that. Oh yeah, that's coming up in slides, but CNN, as I mentioned, was the first cable news network, and it really changed everything, particularly because it was being carried on satellite to foreign countries, it was privately owned, it was very glossy, it was very approachable, people were gripped by it, they were interested in it, it does, it does that telescoping effect of bringing you right to the plane of action, you instantly empathize with the global news event that's going on. And then you've got it 24 hours a day now. All right, let's move on to, I think we'll go here. Non-explosive warfare, IWIO, information warfare. Cywar in the large, it says. Anti-functionals, microwave weapons, chemical weapons, bioweapons, micro-mechanical weapons, anti-personnel, microwave, and radio frequency, micro-mechanical. Cywar in the large. That means everywhere. That means global. And again, this is you're either going to conform and join this Borg system and integrate your thoughts and ultimately have no original thoughts, or you will be targeted and we've got a number of weapons at our disposal. That's I mean, the message here. This is here. propaganda on a whole new level. Throw everything out the window you ever thought about propaganda before. And that's what they're talking about here. Natural warfare, quote unquote. Sensors utilize in situ, in situ, in situ plants, animals, insects. Uh, as sensor platforms, instruments to indicate presence, movement, characteristics. Weapons slash munitions utilize animals such as urban rats. Insects as delivery systems, munitions, feeding, swarming, biting, poisoning, uh, utilizing in, si in situ explosive, destructive capability, offshore methane, hydrate, dams, etc. I read something earlier uh, about in another government document having to do with exploding methane, underground methane compartments to create tsunamis as a, as a weapon of war. We've seen three examples with insects used in practicality. Number one, there were reports that anti-war protests going on in Washington, D.C. were being spied upon by flying dragonfly robotic creatures that actually were spying on them but looked like real insects. Number two, actual biological creatures but genetically modified. We saw Bill Gates saying he's going to fight malaria by making the mosquitoes flying syringes. And an entirely different concept of genetically modified mosquitoes has already been deployed in Florida, Florida to help yeah. eradicate mosquitoes because, uh, you know, they're Is injected. Is it dengue with, fever or something? Well, they're, they're injecting them with a sterilizing agent that's supposed to kill off the mosquito populations, which in turn could carry disease. Right. And we've seen some of that also going on where they're trying to sterilize rats in New York. I think it was the New York City subways, one of the major. Uh, yeah, Northeastern that's right. Space Jobs. I think New York was also, I just read an article about how they're sterilizing deer populations now. And just, I mean, if these things can work on mammals, they're for work on man. You're a mammal too, okay? <laughs> right? This isn't just, uh, anyway. Well, that falls in the footsteps of sterilizing the possums, uh, which is a different species of possum than we have here in Australia and New Zealand where they're considered epidemic. But All it right. works on any mammal, any marsupial. Very creepy stuff. Major anti-U.S. asymmetries. Long increasing, increasingly vulnerable logistics chain. Long undefendable coastline against underwater threats. 
Sensitivity to casualties, which is greatly enhanced by the CNN syndrome, vulnerabilities to terrorism, especially IT and bio, increasing over-reliance upon vulnerable overhead assets. Sensitivity to casualties is greatly enhanced by CNN syndrome. That's well, your propaganda force. Well, they're admitting the threat could come from anywhere because of the technology, but look at who controls it. But they have the word terrorism in quote, vulnerabilities to quote terrorism. Again, this is two months before 9-11. And they straight up say sensitivity to casualties enhanced by the CNN syndrome. So again, it's immediate, it's close, it's, gonna it's come emotionally up again impactful. In a second. Offboard sensors networked everywhere on everything. I mean, this just sounds like the dystopic nightmare of any well, horrible science fiction. Well, movie something ever. that's just, part of this but hasn't been explicitly detailed, even though it's NASA, is that they want to militarize outer space or, you know, immediately surrounding the globe. That's something, again, that's in the Project for a New American Century document with Dick Cheney and other leading neocons, Paul Wolfowitz, about militarizing space. And they want to, quote, own the weather and own space as a militaristic zone. Well, they're certainly doing that now with the geoengineering, geoengineering programs that they keep calling for. They keep saying we're not doing it. But then you actually see Bill Gates funding programs of geoengineering that are going on. Uh, one that I read about was in New Mexico. But they're, they're doing this all over the place. And they might, I mean, at this point, it's so obvious. I mean, my four-year-old the other day was asking me, Mommy, what's that? Because a plane flew by and left a huge trail in the sky that just fanned out and stayed there for like half an hour and it still was there by the time we went inside and what am i supposed to say to him other than it's chemicals they're spraying in the sky to whatever their ends are i mean it's it's how do you explain that to kid uh example of then year direct conus attack capabilities inexpensive info wars inexpensive blast wave accelerators transoceanic uavs um in it, inshore a AIPSS mines torpedoes. Inexpensive to put binary bioweapons into the food into supply. Into your food, semi-submerged missile eggs, Trojan horse civilian systems, in addition to ICBM and TBM. I'm in addition to Trojan it. horse everything, which is on another slide. Trojan horse everything here. Ships, boats, planes, cars, trucks, packages. That's what you were talking about. Told you. Cargo containers. Targeted effects include tidal waves, EMPs, earthquakes, radiation, and blasts. They can't make earthquakes with technology. Oh, wait, that was admitted oh, by the defense yeah, secretary. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Harp. Oops. Okay. What do we also have? Let's see. Sorry, guys. I told you it's a long document. Um... And then there is Nano. Yay. After you've even... been through all this, <laughs> you then, then have to nano. factor in Nano. Oh, woohoo. Um, let's see. What do we have? We have... Future warfare on the cheap, info net warfare, binary bio, again, all the stuff they've been mentioning on the cheap. This is on the cheap for them to do these things. Some interesting possibilities, surreptitious nano tagging with microwave interrogation of everything and everyone. I'm going to say that one more time just because I think it's horrifying. Surreptitious nano tagging with microwave interrogation of everything and everyone imprinted during manufacture, maintenance, etc. They're going to use microwave weapons for interrogation. You guys need to look into, if you haven't already, I know many of our listeners probably are familiar with how HARP can be used to make you hear things inside your head using microwave weapons. And they even have a billboard for a popular uh, paranormal uh, Paranormal State, I believe it was, they had a billboard on a 42, I believe, story building where they had a, a speaker thing up at the top. And if you walked beneath uh, the building on the sidewalk, it sounded like someone was whispering and, and behind you, right in your ear. It's not your imagination. And it's, you can hear it right, right like it's right next to you, like it's right inside your head, basically. Detonation of offshore seabed methane hydrate deposits to reduce tactical strategic level tidal waves against littoral regions. There you go. So they're going to detonate methane deposits to make a tidal wave 
against it's an the age enemy. of weather weapons, and that includes any and all major weather events we've seen may have been initiated we don't know. under these conditions. We don't know Could about that. Could have been anyway. It's possible, totally. I mean, they say the weather's getting stranger. I mean, that's, that's the for weather, sure. Well, and who would benefit from the weather getting stranger? <laughs> I mean, people who are, say, controlling the genetic modification of seeds that are resistant to drought, for example? With nah, those probably some random terrorist in a cave. That's not, yeah, that's no got to be it. Guy. I mean, it's not a total control of our food and basically everything having to do with anything here. I think this is your CNN syndrome page. Let's see. Exploit CNN syndrome. Well, there you go. They're going to sink carriers via swarm attacks, capture, torture Americans in living color on prime time and just show that to you 24 7 be afraid be afraid be afraid never forget never forget 9 11 9 11 never forget and again two months before 9 11 this slideshow presentation joint effort from all these agencies puts terrorism in quotes quote terror attacks within conus binary biocritical infrastructure takedown info war and uh, infra information EMP operations. Radio frequencies against brain. Radio frequencies against brain. They to use a secret Pentagon psychotronics technology known as silent sound spread spectrum using silent subliminals or high frequency silent sounds underneath. Uh, broadcast that they were giving. The most devastating and demoralizing programming was the first known military use of this subliminal messages programmed by PSYOP psychologists that were clearly perceived by the subconscious minds of the Iraqi soldiers. They were subjected to a technology that was so extreme and incomprehensible they were suddenly reduced to the level of compliant children, completely demoralized them and instilled a perpetual feeling of fear and hopelessness in their minds. And serious, serious psy war. war. That includes collateral damage, exploitation. exploitation. And I'll say this as we sort of kind of uh, come to a close. All, this stuff is scary. It's imposing. It's futuristic. It's disruptive. It's a lot of things, but it's clear that if they're relying so much on propaganda and convincing you through CNN syndrome, the effect of a television, that it still matters what you think and that convincing you to go along with their system you must still have power somewhere in that system, and so resistance is not futile. Just remember that, even as things are about to change quite radically. Typical scenario takedown of U.S. by 10 people and less than $10 million. So here's your 9-11 myth for you, or I guess it's becoming a reality too. Ten people with under $10 million could supposedly uh, affect the whole population with a binary bioweapon imported through vitamins, clothing, or the food supply. Or there could be fluoride in your water to be a bioaccommodative. Uh, terror bio, including aflatoxin, that's parts per million uh, carcinogen thing they mentioned. Infowar, including the usual stuff of basic propaganda, as well as serious psy war, which is mentioned just a few bullet points down. Water supply contamination via intercontinental drones, accompanied by serious psy war with collateral damage and plenty of propaganda, as well as selective anti-personnel uh, RF and MW microwaves. microwaves. Towers, that's, that's using towers to selectively pick out people to target with radio frequencies and microwaves. And folks, there are whole groups dedicated to people who say that these kinds of things have been going on with them for years, that they have been the targets of these kinds of attacks. And I will put a link to that as well. You can check that out because there are whole groups of people. I mean, we sometimes get get written letters from people who claim to have been victims of this. And as we've seen with MK Ultra, which was mentioned earlier, our government is not afraid to test these kinds of things out on on us on us before they use them on the american people i mean there's even a speech of bill clinton apologizing in 1995 for the years when mk ultra was being done tested on people and many many indications say that that stuff the cia claims they stopped doing that in the 70s and that's all over and done with but there are many indications that that well, kind of stuff has never line, ended. Just as the Fourth Amendment has been violated and is considered contrary, free speech is not wanted in the system, clearly. They don't want dissidents, and they have technological ways of taking people out. And, yeah, they've got a whole very dark history behind them. They're willing to do this stuff. They have done it. And that's going to be probably in some future reports coming up. But did you want to get to, I think there's a couple Why more Why don't you slides. go ahead and find your quote? Let me see if this is worth covering. 
Yeah, I think that's worth covering. It will soon be possible to connect human brain cells to silicon chips. Goes back again to Kurzweil. IT technology will witness the death of distance. Two-thirds of satellites are foreign-owned. Missile attacks will be over to overwhelm defense systems. And the development of genetically engineered pathogens that will thwart our biodetection defense measure systems and cycles. And Undetectable, then, genetically engineered such. And then here's what they're looking at, circa 2025. They're looking at... Machines as creative, smart, quote-unquote, as humans, robotics, the norm, zeroth order war stoppers, binary bio into nation's agriculture, food distribution system, every home, every foxhole. The next level of concern is ubiquitous, cheap, micro to nano, everything. Sensors, munitions, weapon swarms and hordes, and battlefield attrition. CNN syndrome forces U.S. Army to look, act like SOCOM. And I think that's, again, part of the propaganda, that they want to give the perception that their forces are anywhere and everywhere and could take everyone out. Probably they can't unless they do a war stopper scenario, as they mentioned. But they're going to have proxy wars and individual takedowns and use it to maximize psychological effect before having to come at you physically. And so what does all this psychological effect do, all of this propaganda do? Well, it destroys our ability to think critically. It destroys our ability to speak out. I don't know how many times we'll do a report on something. We have all the documentation to back up what we're saying, just like we do right here, right now. And we're still called conspiracy theorists because that has now been propagandized into if you have a theory that there's been a conspiracy, and on record there's been so many it's hard to even count anymore, then you are automatically, you're, you're leveled down to being basically crazy, and everything you say, people just shut off. They just don't even want to listen to anything you have to say because you're a crazy conspiracy theorist because those two things have now been made synonymous through our media and through propaganda to shut people up so no one will raise these questions and raise these issues and say, hey, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. They're dissuading people from speaking out and dissuading people from having any kind of critical thinking skills or the ability to think on their own. And when you watch these 24-7 news cycles, you're indoctrinated into this propaganda and you're basically told how to think and feel about something. And anything that goes outside that norm that sways the mass, then you're automatically labeled an outsider and you're crazy. And I just oh, have a but this system could be good, right? Well, they just declared that in their value system, humans have increasingly negative to zero value. So keep that in zero mind negative value when added. you want to dispute whether or not they have propaganda or whether or not you think it's okay because you agree with that system. They've pretty much declared you null and void. I just want to read this really quick, having to do with propaganda. This comes from... Jacques Ellul, his book, Propaganda, the Formation of Men's Attitudes. He's the author of The Technological Society. And I just want to close by reading this to you because it gives you something to think about when it comes to this propaganda. He says, all this obviously leads to the elimination of personal judgment, which takes place as soon as the individual accepts public opinion as his own. When he expresses public opinion in his words and gestures, he no longer expresses himself but his society, his group. To be sure, the individual always will express the group more or less. But in this case, he will express it totally and in response to a systematic operation. Moreover, this impersonal public opinion when produced by propaganda is artificial. It corresponds to nothing authentic. Yet it is precisely this artificial opinion that the individual absorbs. He is filled with it. He no longer expresses his ideas but those of his group. And with great fervor at that, it is a propaganda prerequisite that he should assert them with firmness and conviction he absorbs the collective judgments the creatures of propaganda he absorbs them like the nourishment which they have in fact become he expounds them as his own he takes a vigorous stand begins to oppose others he asserts himself at the very moment that he denies his own self without realizing it when he recites his propaganda lesson and says that he is thinking for himself when his eyes see nothing and his mouth only produces sounds previously stenciled into his brain when he says that he is indeed expressing his judgment then he really demonstrates that he no longer thinks at all, ever, and that he does not exist as a person. When the propagandi tries to assert himself as a living reality, he demonstrates his total alienation most clearly, for he shows that he can no longer even distinguish between himself and society. He is then 
perfectly integrated. He is the social group. There is nothing in him not of the group. He is nothing except what propaganda has taught him. He is merely a channel that ingests the truths of propaganda and dispenses them with the conviction that is the result of his absence as a person. He cannot take a single step back to look at events under such conditions. There can be no distance of any kind between him and the propaganda. And he goes on to say, this mechanism of alienation generally corresponds either to projection into an identification with a hero and leader or to a fusion with the mass. And that quote is perfectly sums up what we've been talking about here. This system, this full spectrum domination war against the whole global population is not for military territory. It is for a complete absorption. You will acquiesce. You will insert yourself into you the system. You will become part of the mass. Or you will be a target. When you turn on the television now and you see political events matching up with each other of something happens and then suddenly there's a terrorist attack and never forget 9-11, just remember not to immediately give in to the fear and realize these are the same people that are coming up with phrases like CNN syndrome and their ex exploitation of such events. Yeah, look up the Brookings Institute definition. I think we'll leave it there, but they have very clearly dehumanized us, and they've said that we're going to be displaced in so many ways by this. And it just is something to think about. Don't give in to the fear. Every time you turn on the television, think critically. It's a skill that's being lost. Thanks for listening. Uh, a lot of these programs were put in place before I came in. Uh, I had some skepticism. And I think there's a, we should have a healthy skepticism mm -hmm. about what government's doing. There is no spying on Americans. There is no spying on Americans. No spying on Americans. Uh, you know, we don't have a domestic spying program. 